One of the reasons for getting involved in, in SMART is that I think it's addressing some, some challenges that are very, very pertinent to Australia at the moment. Um, we do have a, a, a very significant infrastructure backlog, there's no question about that. How you measure that depends on where you come from, but it might be 300 billion, it might be 700 billion, but there is a very large backlog and there are limited resources to address that. Some of the particular challenges that we face now in terms of scarcity of, of resources, not so much expertise, but particularly finance, do mean that some, some really clear and robust decision-making processes need to be in place. And to do that requires a good set of governance principles and practices. So that's a, that's a research stream that is of a fair amount of interest to me. There's a set of challenges in front of us. Um, we've got a growing economy, notwithstanding global conditions. Um, we do have a significant backlog of infrastructure. Um, we have uh, a growing population base and changing demographics, and all of those mean that we have some, some significant challenges in delivering really good value for money in our infrastructure where it is most needed. So I think the kind of work that, that SMART is doing in terms of um, analysing some of the issues, say, around finance or around governance or around um, system thinking for our infrastructure solutions can contribute very positively to getting it right um, and, and avoiding uh, perhaps suboptimal investment, um, making sure that, that our energies and our finances are directed where they're of most value. Government, um, delivery agencies, private sector, research organisations all have their various agendas and interests, but I think one of the particular things that SMART can do is to, to first of all crystallise some of the underlying issues, and I've talked about that, say, in terms of governance, um, and then be a, be a really effective means of communicating to industry at large what those issues are and how they might be addressed um, in a collaborative way uh, rather than purely in a competitive or a self-interested way. One of the interesting things about working within a, a design and engineering practice is that, is that you get to see the boundaries being, being pushed. One of the, the particular areas that's of interest to me um, relates to, to integrated land use planning and, and transport infrastructure planning. And I know that's, that's very high on the, on the radar for, for SMART. Um, and we're seeing a number of governments, um, state and, and local, trying to address this in a, in a more systematic and integrated way, and I think that's very positive. So Knox City in Melbourne is, is one example where, um, where there's some very forward thinking, in my view, around um, best land use and, and transport solutions. Um, I know the New South Wales government itself is, is piloting projects such that um, as we think about how Sydney as a city might grow to six or seven million people, where are they going to reside, what, what will their transport needs be um, and how might they be best served, whether it's by, by road, by rail or by, or by what other means. One of our interesting experiences was um, our involvement in the South East Queensland Infrastructure Plan and Program not so many years ago. Um, where it was quite clear that the infrastructure needs of South East Queensland with its growing population would be enormous over the next 20 years and there was, there was a major undertaking um, to get the, the various delivery agencies to talk to each other, to share data in such a way that a whole of government approach could be created, um, a forward infrastructure plan could be developed and most importantly could then be communicated um, to residents, uh, to the city around about, um, to the contracting community and, and the design community so that they could plan their forward resources. And that was updated progressively. But there were, there were some very major achievements there in, in sharing of data and consolidating and then allowing government to, to make prioritisation decisions on a whole of government basis. And I think that's a very, very useful precedent.